Hello and thanks for stopping by for the video. This week we are going to be crafting a tower, but we're going to be using a technique that I have never used before and I stumbled upon by accident. Now I've never seen another video use this technique before and if you have please let me know in the comments below. Now how this started was very simple. I had a building that I had crafted out of these four panels like you see in front of you right now. Um, however, after I glued them together, the four walls together, I didn't like the way it looked. I thought the blocks were too big for the sections of wall, and I wound up just putting it to the side. Recently, I went through some stuff, and I was cleaning things up and organizing it, trying to make room, and I found this building again. And I thought, well, I'm not going to throw it away. It's, I think it's good for something. So what I do is I just cut the four walls uh, apart again. And so I had four sections like you see here. Now, three of the sections were perfectly flat, just like this one. However, the fourth one, for some reason, I, I don't know why, had a warp to it. So, I just did the usual. I flipped it over, I got some white glue, and I just coated the back with white glue, let it dry, and then just it'll just reverse the warp. Now, after I coated it in white glue, I just left it on my desk and kind of forgot about it for a little while. When I came back, however, I noticed something odd that the outer layer of cardboard was very thin and the glue had soaked in and had caused it to separate from the corrugation underneath it. So basically what that meant was there was no way this was going to reverse the warp when it dried. It was just going to peel off all the cardboard. So I went ahead and just did that. I just peeled off the first layer of cardboard and exposed the corrugation underneath. What I wound up with were four sections of wall that were incredibly flexible. These were curving naturally almost on their own without me even having to bend them. So with that, I thought, let me try to make a tower out of it and see what happens. So the first thing I did was remedy the problem I had with the bricks being too large. And that was easy enough to do, just taking a knife, scoring the bricks at random intervals, and then just using a pencil to widen up the gap in between them and make the bricks into, you know, several smaller bricks. From there, I took a piece of scrap XPS foam, used my circle jig, cut out a circle that was about four and a half inches in diameter, and then split that circle down the middle so I had two. Taking my first wall section, I used a healthy bead of hot glue and attached it to the XPS circle. Now, had I been planning this out ahead of time instead of just kind of falling upon it, I would have measured the radius of the circle and then just made one continuous sheet of wall section that I could just wrap completely around instead of having to do it in smaller sections. Now I really didn't have a choice on how the bricks were going to be oriented. It had to be in the way that the corrugation lined up with them. So that being said, it did work out well because as you can see, as I attach one sheet next to the other or one wall section next to the other, they line up perfectly and you really can't tell where one starts and the other ends. After three of the wall sections were glued in, I glued in the second XPS circle at the top of the tower. This way it had extra rigidity and was super strong. Once that was done, I went ahead to the roof. For the roof, I decided to go with a cone shape rather than just do kind of a, a flat roof with crenellations. I just wanted to try something different. The easiest way I found to do that was just to take a piece of craft foam, cut a half circle out of it, and then just join the bottoms of the circle together. I used a piece of painter's tape to hold the two ends together, and this way it gave me a chance to reposition the two pieces so that I could get them as flush and as even as possible. I used hot glue on the inside of the cone to join the two halves together. And then in addition, for extra strength, I took some wood dowels and glued those to the inside of the cone as well. This way when it was sitting on top of the tower itself, there would be no real squishiness to the roof. When it was all done, the inside of the roof looked like this. A bit messy, but doesn't really matter because you're never going to see the inside part of this. I wound up refining my cone a bit and made a second one. On the second one, I used strips of foam to hide the seam. 
And then just to match it, I put additional strips around the outside of the roof as well. And then to hide the roof peak, I used another cone, a much smaller cone, and put that at the very top with a flagpole coming out of the top of the smaller cone. From there, we did a real basic paint job. Black paint mixed with Mod Podge on everything to really strengthen up that foam, especially the roof. And then on the tower, we just did our usual suede with a black wash over it, followed by a dry brush of a cream color. For the roof, we went ahead with an antique copper, just grimed it up a bit and used a green wash to uh, really darken it up and stain the roof up a bit. And then just put out a little flag at the top and we were good to go. The door that you see that I used there was the uh, one of the doors I made in the previous video, and I'll leave a link below in case you missed that one. I figured this was some type of army barracks or jail or something, so I wound up cutting a few arrow slits into the side of the walls as well. So I'd really like to know if any of you guys have seen this kind of technique used before. I've never seen any videos done that use anything similar to this. The closest thing I could say is I've seen some crafters use clay for towers, but I've never seen anybody use this specific type of material. So if you have, let me know in the comments below because I'd really love to hear from you um, and know if this is something I just stumbled upon or if it's already been done. Alrighty then, that's going to do it guys. Before you go, please, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up and the bell as well while you're at it. And if you'd like to go a step further and support the channel a little bit more, head over to my coffee shop where you can sign up for a coffee membership for as little as $2 a month and get some really cool benefits. I'll leave a link below and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.